Hi guys, it is December and Christmas time is officially here! So before we forget all about fall, I wanted to do a fall reads wrap-up video. So a lot of the time there will be books that I want to tell you guys about that I don't necessarily want to make entire videos for, so instead I will make rapid reviews where I talk about multiple books in one video. I'll try to keep each book under one minute, not a promise, I'm gonna try really hard. I'll have to talk really 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 fast, which I can't do very well, so we'll see how that goes. Obviously about a minute for each book won't be the most in-depth review ever, but I just want to share with you my impression of the book, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and obviously if you have any more questions about it, if you want more information or whatever, just leave a comment below and I will be happy to reply. Also I will be putting annotations right here of the books that I'll be talking about in this video so you can skip around to whichever book you want in case you don't want to listen to all of them. First book is Let the Great World Spin by Colin McCann. I read this back in September. This was in my Beautiful Spines video and a lot of people love this spine so they want to know what this book is about. So let me tell you. In 1974, Philippe Petit walked a tightrope between the Twin Towers in New York City. This novel tells the stories of a number of people who are, in some way, big or small, connected to Philippe Petit's dramatic performance. This book is so, so beautifully written. Colin McCann is able to convey emotions with words like magic. The way he portrays his characters really allows you to walk in their shoes, even if you don't really relate to them in any way, or if you disapprove of what they're doing, you just feel for them. Also, the way the book talks about the actual tightrope walk is amazing, how people would stop on the street, look up, and just pause their entire day to watch this man suspended in midair between these two towers that you, as a reader, know do not exist anymore. It's electric. This is a very heavy book and it makes you very sad and it kind of destroys you a little bit. I feel like you have to be in a certain mood to be able to read it. Like right now, around Christmas time, I usually read very light-hearted, fun, happy books, so I would not be able to read this book, but maybe in January would be a good idea to start reading this if you're interested. I would say that if you liked Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Foer or The History of Love by Nicole Krauss, you will really appreciate this book. I give this book 4.5 to 5 out of 5, maybe 4.8. It was really good. I loved it. I just took forever talking about Let the Great World Spin. I don't know how this rapid reviews thing is going to pan out, but let's talk about The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling. You probably know this already, but the book is about the people of the town of Pagford in the aftermath of the death of Barry Fairbrother. This book is very, very long and starts off really slowly. The first hundred or so pages, you're being introduced to so many different characters in a very short amounts of time that you're kind of overwhelmed. I almost actually took a pen and paper and wrote down the number, the names of the characters and like connected them with each other just so I could keep track. I didn't end up doing that because that's crazy, but I almost did. But after a while, once you get used to the characters switching around, a lot and you get to know who they are, you become really invested in the story. It surprised me how concerned I was for a lot of these people and how much I hated some of them. If you like super in-depth character development and the intricacies of human condition and beautifully written small town gossip, then you will love this book. But if you like action-packed, fast-paced books, this is not your cup of tea. I'm not saying you won't enjoy it, but I'm just saying if you want to read this, approach it with that knowledge. I give this book four stars out of five, really liked it, loved the experience of reading it. I feel like this is a book that J.K. Rowling really enjoyed writing, so it made me really enjoy reading it. I feel like she loved writing this story so much that she told it in a lot, a lot, a lot of words. It's a very, very long book for such a small town, but it was good. Now let's talk about Dracula by Bram Stoker. This gothic novel came out in 1897, and while there have been books about vampires before it, this is the piece de resistance of vampire literature. I enjoyed this book way more than I thought I would. Like, I loved it. It was so, so interesting reading about how vampires were portrayed according to the actual myths of the time knowing that it would eventually evolve to become what we have now as the sparkly, beautiful, romantic, vegetarian, overly sexual vampires. It was just so nice to read a story about vampires that were actually scary and creepy and evil. Also, this book is written in the form of documents, like letters and diary entries and such, and it really, really works. Even when you're reading a diary entry from one of the protagonists, you still get that creepy, suspenseful feeling that maybe Dracula is right there. I knew next to nothing about Van Helsing before reading this book, and I actually didn't even know that he was in this book until he showed up. Oh, somebody's ignorant. But yeah, he showed up and I was like, what? 
but I did a Wikipedia search and this book is actually the origin of Van Helsing, the Vampire Slayer. Also, my complaint about the end is that it just seemed really simple how they dealt with Dracula. I finished reading the book and I was like, that's it? Nonetheless, it was a great, creepy, kind of historical Halloween read. I give the book 4 stars, 4.5 stars out of 5. I don't care about stars. Pretty sure I'm majorly failing rapid reviews right now because I'm taking a long time talking about these books. But let's get on with French Milk by Lucy Nisley. This book is an illustrated documentation of a six-week trip that Lucy and her mother took to France. It actually made me feel like I was sitting down at a cafe talking to Lucy Nisley about this trip that she took to France. It's like she's telling me about the delicious food that she ate, the things that she bought, the places she saw, the people she saw. Now, the synopsis at the back of the book talks about the mother-daughter relationship, and it kind of made me feel like the book would focus on that. It does show you what their relationship is like very subtly, but it doesn't really focus on that. This is really just a journal that Lucy Nisley kept while she was in France. It's just her talking about delicious food and beautiful places, and it's fun. And lastly, The Principles of Uncertainty by Myra Coleman. This book is basically an illustrated look into her psyche. It's filled with delightful drawings like this of food, lots of candy and cake, and people with fabulous hats, and there's even some Abe in there. As much as this book is filled with whimsical, charming drawings, it's also filled with a lot of important questions and thoughts about life and our existence. Mark Hallman mentions a lot of philosophers and famous people and regular people, and she wonders what makes people tick, what makes people go on. It was a fantastic read and I just love Myra Coleman's illustrations. They make me so happy. So that is it for rapid reviews. I'm gonna now go edit this video to make it seem as if I did sort of well with rapid reviews, but you should know it took me a long time to actually talk about these books and I'm probably gonna cut out a lot of the stuff that I said. But yes, more rapid reviews to come in the following year. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely, lovely week. Anyone else reading The Hobbit? We only have two weeks to finish it before the movie comes out.